When we talk about why Chinese EV companies are dominating the global market, one reason that always comes up is government subsidies. And yes, those subsidies did play a big role. But here's the thing, they're just one part of the story. The real story? The Chinese government rolled out nine major policies, not just subsidies, starting over two decades ago. These policies were implemented with a purpose, systematically, deliberately, and consistently with one clear goal, to become a global leader in electric vehicles. In this video, we're going to break down each of these nine policies. We'll show you how each one helped push China's EV industry from a follower to a global powerhouse. To see how it all began, we must rewind to the early 2000s. Back then, China's car industry was barely on the global radar. Automakers in Europe, the US, and Japan had been refining the internal combustion engine for decades. China, it was far behind. But Chinese leaders saw an opening, a chance to skip ahead by betting on a new kind of technology, electric vehicles. So, in 2001, they made a bold move. EV technology was named a priority research area in China's 10th five-year plan. That moment kicked off a massive long-term strategy, one that would go on to change the future of the global auto industry. Let's start by examining one of the most powerful tools in China's EV arsenal, subsidies. From 2009 to 2023, the Chinese government unleashed an unprecedented flood of financial support, pouring over $230 billion into the EV sector. This staggering sum was distributed through a variety of channels, benefiting both manufacturers and consumers. For EV buyers, the incentives were hard to ignore. Consumers would receive rebates of up to $8,000 when purchasing an electric vehicle. These rebates, combined with generous tax breaks and exemptions, dramatically altered the economics of EV ownership. Suddenly, electric cars were not just a novelty for eco-conscious enthusiasts, but a financially attractive option for the average Chinese consumer. But the government's financial support didn't stop there. EV manufacturers received an array of benefits that helped them rapidly scale up production and drive down costs. Cut-rate land, electricity, and loans flowed to companies building high-tech EV and battery plants. Over $25 billion in R&D funding was channeled to universities, research institutes, and enterprises working on cutting-edge EV technologies. The impact of these subsidies was transformative. In the early years of China's EV push, government support covered over 40% of the total cost of producing each Chinese electric vehicle. This allowed companies to scale up production at breakneck speed, even while selling vehicles at rock-bottom prices. BYD, which would eventually dethrone Tesla as the world's largest EV maker, reportedly lost a staggering $35,000 on every car it sold in the second quarter of 2023. But thanks to the government's bottomless wallet, it didn't matter. This strategy of burning cash to gain market share and technological superiority was one that no Western competitor could match. While subsidies provided the fuel for China's EV revolution, regulatory support and mandates served as the engine, driving the industry forward at an unprecedented pace. The Chinese government implemented a series of stringent regulations and mandates designed to accelerate EV adoption and phase out traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. One of the most impactful policies was the introduction of fuel economy standards. These standards set increasingly stringent targets for vehicle efficiency, making it increasingly difficult and expensive for manufacturers to produce traditional gasoline-powered cars. This created a powerful incentive for automakers to shift their focus towards electric vehicles, which could more easily meet these stringent requirements. In addition to fuel economy standards, China implemented a Zero Emission Vehicle, or ZEV, mandate. This policy required automakers to produce a certain percentage of their vehicles as zero emission models, with the percentage increasing over time. Companies that failed to meet these targets faced hefty fines, while those that exceeded them could earn valuable credits to sell to other manufacturers. 
The government also took aim at consumer behavior, implementing restrictions on new internal combustion engine vehicle registrations in major cities. In metropolises like Beijing and Shanghai, obtaining a license plate for a traditional car became a costly and time-consuming process, often involving lotteries or auctions. In contrast, EV buyers could obtain license plates quickly and easily, making electric vehicles an increasingly attractive option for urban dwellers. These regulatory measures created a powerful push-pull dynamic. Automakers were compelled to produce more EVs to meet government mandates, while consumers found themselves increasingly incentivized to choose electric over traditional options. The result was a rapid acceleration of EV adoption that far outpaced what market forces alone could have achieved. As China's EV industry began to take shape, the government recognized that true dominance would require more than just assembling vehicles. To become a global EV powerhouse, China needed to control the entire supply chain. This realization led to a concerted effort to develop a robust, localized EV ecosystem. The government's approach to supply chain development was multifaceted and far-reaching. It began with securing access to critical raw materials. China strategically invested in lithium mines in South America and Africa, ensuring a steady supply of this crucial battery component. But securing the mines was just the first step. China also built refineries to process these raw materials domestically adding value and reducing dependence on foreign suppliers. With a steady supply of raw materials secured, China turned its attention to manufacturing. The government provided support and incentives for companies to produce every component of an electric vehicle domestically. This included batteries, electric motors, power electronics, and more. The result was a vertically integrated supply chain that gave Chinese EV makers a significant cost advantage over their global competitors. Perhaps no company embodies this approach better than BYD. Short for Build Your Dreams, BYD has become the most vertically integrated EV company in China, and possibly the world. Unlike many automakers who rely on a network of suppliers, BYD produces nearly every component of its vehicles in-house. From mining raw materials to manufacturing batteries, motors, and even semiconductors, BYD controls virtually every step of the production process. This level of vertical integration allows BYD to reduce costs, ensure quality control, and rapidly iterate on designs, advantages that have helped propel it to the forefront of the global EV market. China's push for supply chain dominance extended beyond manufacturing. The government also invested heavily in developing a network of service providers, including charging station operators, battery recycling facilities, and maintenance specialists. This comprehensive approach ensured that as EV adoption grew, the necessary infrastructure and support services would be in place to sustain it. By developing a robust localized supply chain, China not only reduced its dependence on foreign technology and components, but also created a formidable barrier to entry for foreign competitors. The scale and efficiency of China's EV ecosystem make it challenging for outside companies to compete on price or capabilities, further cementing China's position as the global EV leader. While private consumer adoption was crucial to China's EV strategy, the government recognized an opportunity to supercharge growth by focusing on public transportation. The electrification of bus and taxi fleets became a cornerstone of China's EV push, providing massive benefits to both the environment and domestic EV manufacturers. In 2009, China launched the 10 Cities, 1,000 Vehicles program, which aimed to roll out 1,000 electric vehicles in each of 10 pilot cities annually. A significant portion of these vehicles were buses and taxis. This initiative created an immediate large-scale demand for electric vehicles, providing a crucial boost to Chinese EV manufacturers like BYD and later companies such as NIO. The impact of this program was profound. By 2017, the city of Shenzhen had become the first in the world to electrify its entire public bus fleet 
a staggering 16,359 vehicles. Other cities quickly followed suit. By the end of 2022, over 77% of all urban buses in China, some 542,000 vehicles, were classified as new energy vehicles, with the vast majority being pure electric. This massive electrification effort provided numerous benefits to Chinese EV companies. First and foremost, it created a stable, high-volume market that allowed manufacturers to scale up production rapidly. The predictable demand from municipal governments enabled companies to invest confidently in expanding their manufacturing capabilities and driving down costs through economies of scale. Moreover, the focus on buses and taxis pushed Chinese EV makers to innovate quickly in critical areas. Public transportation vehicles face demanding duty cycles, with long operating hours and high daily mileage. This forced manufacturers to develop more durable and efficient batteries, motors, and charging systems. The lessons learned from these challenging applications could then be applied to passenger vehicles, accelerating the overall development of EV technology. The electrification of public transportation also served as a powerful demonstration of EV technology to the general public. As millions of Chinese citizens experienced electric buses and taxis in their daily lives, it helped normalize the technology and build confidence in its reliability. This public exposure played a crucial role in accelerating consumer acceptance of electric vehicles. By focusing on electrifying buses and taxis, China not only reduced urban pollution and carbon emissions, but also provided its domestic EV industry with an unparalleled opportunity to refine their technologies, scale up production, and gain real-world experience. This strategy helped propel Chinese EV makers to the forefront of the global industry, giving them capabilities and scale that would have been difficult to achieve through passenger vehicle sales alone. As China's EV industry began to take shape, the government recognized that widespread adoption would require more than just affordable vehicles. A robust charging infrastructure was essential to alleviate range anxiety and make EVs a practical option for everyday use. Recognizing this need, the Chinese government embarked on an ambitious plan to build the world's largest and most comprehensive EV charging network. The scale of China's charging infrastructure build-out is nothing short of staggering. By 2022, the country had installed 1.8 million public charging stations, representing a full two-thirds of the global total. In addition, 3.4 million private charging points were established. To put this in perspective, China now has one charging pillar for every 2.5 electric vehicles on its roads. This massive infrastructure push was made available through a combination of government investment, policy support, and collaboration with private industry. State-owned enterprises, particularly the State Grid Corporation of China, took a leading role in deploying charging stations across the country. The government also implemented policies to mandate the inclusion of charging infrastructure in new residential and commercial developments. But it wasn't just about quantity. China also focused on developing fast-charging technology and standardizing charging protocols. This ensured that EV owners could reliably charge their vehicles quickly and conveniently, regardless of the make or model. The comprehensive charging network had a profound impact on EV adoption. It effectively eliminated range anxiety for many consumers, making electric vehicles a practical option for long-distance travel as well as daily commuting. This, in turn, boosted consumer confidence and accelerated EV sales. Moreover, the extensive charging infrastructure provided valuable data and real-world experience that Chinese EV and battery manufacturers could use to improve their products. Companies could analyze charging patterns, identify bottlenecks, and optimize their vehicles and batteries for real-world use cases. The success of China's charging infrastructure strategy is evident in the country's EV adoption rates. In 2022, nearly 30% of all new cars sold in China were electric, compared to just 6% in the United States. This high adoption rate is due in no small part to the ubiquity and reliability of charging options. As we've seen, China's rise to EV dominance is the result of a comprehensive strategy from generous subsidies to innovative policies. 
But this is just the beginning of our exploration. In our next video, we'll dive deeper into China's massive R&D investments, protectionist policies, the influential Made in China 2025 plan, and how the Belt and Road Initiative is expanding Chinese EV influence globally. If you found this information valuable, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the bell icon to be notified when we release part 2 of this series. We'd love to hear your thoughts on China's EV strategy in the comments down below. What aspect of China's approach surprised you the most? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in part 2.